it's Bill Colorado 4x4 Van and today I want to do a video I've been uh, receiving questions and involved in some threads on um, some uh, van van threads on YouTube and uh, Facebook and some other areas and a lot of the questions come back to solar and a lot of people are curious about it not just uh, people that are full-time van dwellers but also people like me that are recreational users that um, have been using generators and you can probably hear mine I got my little Honda there it's sitting outside the door and it runs all these lights and everything charges batteries and stuff but um, a lot of people want to get away from that and I did too so I thought I'd do a little video here to show the evolution of my system to uh, help you not make the same mistakes that I did and uh, show you what's possible with solar uh, the first thing I want to get to is the myth that solar is hard to do, and it, it really isn't. It's really easy to do. Um, of all the things I've tackled in the van here, the solar has been one of the easiest things to do. So many of the components now are plug and play. You can get, you can put them together really easily with just very basic uh, construction knowledge. Um, you can you can make a system that does exactly what you want it to do. Now there are a lot of sites out there that tell you how to measure what you're going to use and, and, and you want to go through those first to find out what kind of, how much power you need to be comfortable. And for me, I redesigned my system three times because my usage has changed. And I'll kind of go through here uh, how it changed and why. Now as far as the panels go, this back panel here it's a 100 watt monocrystalline panel, Renogy, and I've always had that from the beginning. So that hasn't changed. I added these other two in phases, and I'll talk about that in a couple minutes. I always had this panel, and it's kind of on a tilt here. It's in a luggage rack up here on top of my high top. So as long as I point the back of the van south, no matter what time of year, it gets very good uh, sunshine on it even in the spring and fall when it's a little bit lower in the sky here in Colorado the tilt helps out. Um, so I've always had that. I'm now up to 230 watts another hundred and a thirty and that is enough for what I'm doing. But when I started out I had a hundred watts panel. I had your basic Walmart battery which says it's about 110 amp hours of storage, but that's that's suspect. So just know that ahead of time. <laughs> it depends on a lot of factors, but I found you get about 80, 90 amp hours out of this. But it's cheap. This is 100 bucks, and if you replace it in a year, you can get it replaced for free um, within a year. Um, but they're 100 bucks a piece. They're not expensive, so they're a good choice. Um, for when you're starting out. When it comes to charge controllers, that's where you have to do your homework. Um, I started out with a controller, um, for instance, this controller here, which was my second one. Here's the controller part here. There's this optional readout for it, and I think I've seen people like DreamSight out. There are several people that have bought a similar, the same company um, system. The first one I bought was a little bit bigger than this, and it was both of these combined into one. It was about this thin. I'll see if I can get a picture of it here. And about that wide. And it was a controller and readout in one. The readout was very small. You could barely read it. You had to look at it. And for an old guy like me, you had to put your glasses on to read the readout. But I found it didn't, um, it didn't work very well. It wasn't MPPT, which I'll talk about in a second so it it actually drew power out when the sun wasn't out it would draw power and I went through one of these batteries the first year it wouldn't charge anymore after a year with that controller and I didn't have a lot of load back then my biggest load then for the first Moab trip was my furnace um, if you take away the stereo the stereo but that, I, heard, I don't use that unless I'm driving usually. So the stereo is my biggest load then, but the furnace was my biggest load when I was parked and using the house battery. And that's basically an electric fan that runs, um, cycles on and off. 
your basic RV heater. And after one year of that, just using that and some, all my lights are LED, so there's hardly any load there. Um, just one, after one year of that, my battery wouldn't charge anymore. So I knew something wasn't quite right because that, you know, we get 315 days a week, of, a year, sorry, of sun here in Colorado. So I knew that it's getting sun, it should be keeping it charged, but uh, it wasn't. So I switched to this setup. This was the second one that I had. And this is made by Tracer at the time. I think Renogy has since bought this company. Um, I've seen both still for sale, but I got it on Amazon. And this was a inexpensive, and I did a bunch of research between that first controller and this one. I did a bunch of research. And this is an MPPT solar charge controller. And what that does is it takes excessive voltage, like these are 12 volts, um, but a lot of solar panels will bring in 14, 14 and a half volts, um, sometimes a little higher. And what MPPT does is it takes that extra voltage above 12 and it turns it into more amperage. So you get less loss and you get more uh, charge power out of, the su out of the sunlight you get. Um, this is a very basic cheap one. It did test out, some independent labs tested it, and it does actually, it does work, but it's, it's pretty basic. It's not uh, the high dollar one that I have now as much much more efficient than this, but this is more efficient than the one I had, for sure. Um, but it came with, this was about 80 bucks. The readout was another $35. And it lights up, so you can read out everything. What this doesn't tell you is the number of amps that you're using, so that's a down, down part about this. But this worked great. This controller can take 130 watts maximum. Um, or 10 amps and at 10 amps times 30 volt, 13 volts is about 130 watts so that's why I got this panel second which is a 30 watt panel that combined with my original took me up to 130 watts which is the maximum that this can do and this is why I say when you're doing your calculations you have to see what you're going to use and then size these things accordingly otherwise you're gonna buy two or three different things as you get upgraded if you're cheap like me I don't put in the top dollar right away I try to go as as low as I can and still have good things but you gotta do some homework so this worked great until I got my fridge and it's a DC fridge uh, the manufacturer says it uses 24 watts per hour so that's about two amps an hour and over a day that's about 48 amp hours um, and when I got that, it used more than this could replace. So you want to do a careful addition of all the power that you've got or that you plan to have. And I advise that you leave a lot of space to expand because you don't need to buy a kit like a lot of the solar stores, a lot of the RV stores. They sell kits with a, a panel or two and a controller that'll fit those and then you just need batteries and they got the cords and everything but that's designed to just be done when you put it in that's what it is I recommend that you get a controller that has some room so if you find as I did that one panel's not quite enough you add another little panel that's not quite enough so you add a third panel and then maybe you're there but I still have the controller I have now which I'll show you in here in a second, is capable of 400 watts, and I'm using 230 of it right now. So I've got room to expand, even if I don't have much roof space to expand. But you can always have something set outside if you wanted that you tie in, um, that you can move around when the sun moves. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do this, and as long as your controller can handle it, then you're okay to go. So anyway, back to the second one that I had. This one seems to work very well, and they make bigger versions of this that work with the same readout so you can change out just this part and uh, keep the rest um, but I went I was inspired by uh, Explorer Steve he got the blue sky and I did some looking into them and I really liked uh, what I read about them so I got their controller which I'll show you here in a second 
Now, as I said, it, my system worked great until I got my fridge. And here it is. It's just a truck fridge. Fairly small. You can see pop cans in here to give you the size of the scale. It's got a freezer. Freezer up here. I got this used on Craigslist, but um, I did some research before I bought it, and the manufacturer says that it uh, uses about 24 watts per hour on average. Now, there's a lot of factors that, that involves your outside temp. I put extra insulation in here. There's a vent up here and one below to get the heat out of the back, but it still depends. I mean, if the sun is, face, is on this side of the van, it's, it's really hot over there, so that makes it work harder. Uh, if it's really warm outside, it works harder. If it's really cold outside, which in the spring and fall it is, then it works less. So it's average 24 watts an hour, which is 2 amps. That's about 2 amps at 12 volts. So that's uh, over a 24-hour period, that's about 48 amp hours. Now when you have a 100 amp hour storage battery like I do, turn the light on here, that's half your capacity. Is being used by this but that too needs is not totally accurate because during the day if you have a good uh, solar system it's charging your battery plus it runs this while the sun's out so when I got my fridge that became my biggest power suck and um, I had to size things accordingly so I got rid of that other controller and as I or Steve got this same controller but not the MPPT version and uh, I like the MPPT component especially since I'm using I'm out in the wilderness for two three days at a time sometimes even more so I wanted it to be as efficient as possible and I don't have a lot of space for batteries as you can see so I'm thinking about adding a second battery back underneath the bed but for now I just have this 100 amp hour battery and it's true 100 amp hours. It's not the Walmart where it's actually 80 or 90. It's 100 amp hours. It's, I've tested it many times now. So, so I finally got my load down. And this load includes um, the fridge is the biggest. The biggest load by far. But I also use the TV, which is 12 volt. And with that, when I watch movies, I, have the, I use the stereo. And we have the fantastic fan. Got the furnace. The fireplace heater, which has its fan that doesn't use a lot, but it has a, a circulation fan there. Uh, water pump, which you use for this. And then all the lighting, which is all LED, but it's still, I mean, it's small fraction, but it adds up. But even with all that, 100 amp hour battery, 230 watts of solar, and a good controller. And this whole year, I haven't had to use my generator at all. It is run every night. It's never... I've never come close to killing it. Even with days, uh, one day up, in, up on this last trip was cloudy and rainy, uh, an overwhelming majority of the day. And But by the end of the day, it had still charged enough that I was fine that whole night. So, um, overall, I finally got to where I want to be, uh, as long as I don't add anything else, which, when you're constantly adding things, you just, you just never know. But... Um, I do have the ability to add another panel up there, no problem, and uh, this controller can handle it. I won't have to change anything here. I can just add it up on the roof and uh, get a Y adapter, and, and they just plug and play, plug together. So I can always change that 30-watt panel to another 100, or even something a little less than that if I want to go, go a little bigger. Most solar panels come with these type of ends on them. This is the male, and this is the female. This is a Y adapter here that you can use. Um, if you want to expand your system, you just use this to add panels. I've done something like that right here to take my output into two different places. But if you have just one panel up here, like I did for a long time, to add a second panel, you just get one of these to plug in another panel, and then you can get another one of these to do a third panel, and so on, and you can string them all together. And if you have an MPPT controller and you get into advanced solar, you can stack the voltage. So you'll get up to, the voltage stacks with each one and you can get up to a lot of voltage and then the MPPT controller, if it's sized properly, will change that higher voltage into more amperage, which will give you more power a lot faster. 
the uh, last thing I did re recently was was the inverter and uh, I'm glad I got that I didn't think I would need it because I was trying to get everything 12 volt but it turns out um, in an older video I said this uh, TV it doesn't like to run below about 12.5 volts you can see I'm at 13.3 now but at night it'll quickly get to 12.5 or just even a little below that later at night so the TV wouldn't run but uh, to so to overcome that I just plug the TV into the inverter it has the remote start right here you turn that on and uh, that'll run 12 that'll produce enough well then I use the uh, house plug-in for the TV and it works fine even when it gets below 12.5 volts on the actual battery so conquered that problem plus it's convenient um, when I turn on the inverter it powers up these so I can charge things here real easy phones radios whatever and uh, so that's worked out well too so I do while I was uh, a little against an inverter that didn't want to use the space or spend the money um, it actually has worked out so I guess overall the best thing I can say is one do your homework uh, get a good idea of what you're gonna do and then add a bunch of extra space for things that you haven't thought of yet um, then go to some place like Amazon or uh, stores like that and buy the pieces individually because if you buy a kit you're gonna get char you'll be charged more and you're gonna be real limited with what expandability you can have so I buy the pieces individually and then start with what you think you'll need and just have expandability for the future. And it's a good way to do it under a budget too. Those 100 watt panels are about $120, $130. So if you get one and a good controller and a decent battery, do a trip or two like that. See where you're at. If it's not quite up there, you can always add another panel for another $130. A little Y adapter cord to plug them together is only another 20 bucks. And then you can expand off of that. And if you have a bigger rig, um, some of these campers, you could put hundreds and hundreds of lots of panels up there. So you can go as big as you need to go and just do it incrementally, which is what I did. And just grow slowly. But I, what you don't need to do is buy a bunch of different charge controllers like I did, because that's a waste of money. And while you don't need it right away, I do recommend getting a good battery. Um, initially, it's not necessary. But eventually, you're going to get tired of unwiring and replacing your batteries every year. And uh, that, that, while the expense may not be there, they're cheaper. But you're spending a lot of time doing that, where if you get a decent battery, it should last five or six years, no problem. And I guess that's about it. I love the system. It's easy to do. And uh, don't think it's, it's just really hard, because it really isn't that hard to do. And you really be thankful that you don't have to hear the buzzing of a generator or anything like that when you want to use things. You can now be out in nature and have it quiet, and it's it's beautiful. It's wonderful. Trust me on this. And a lot of a lot of you guys won't need to have a fridge that's all DC like me. You can a lot of a lot of different uh, vans. You can run it on propane, for instance, and then that takes a big load off of your system. So that's where you do you do your homework up front and see what you're gonna need, and get an accurate reading of what you're gonna need and then uh, go from there. So that's my advice, hope this helps, and we'll see you next time.